Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, so I'm presenting our study, which is examining Canada's return visits uh, to the emergency department after a concussion. I'll have to figure out how to use this. Um, none of this is important. This is what we're going to talk about. Uh, so this study kind of came about because we're seeing increasing numbers of patients presenting to emergency departments uh, with symptoms of concussions following a head injury, um, asking about diagnosis and management from emergency physicians. And as emergency visits are very brief encounters, patients often have continuing symptoms that prompt significant concern when they're at home and they don't have access to follow-up, particularly outside of Toronto where many Canadians now lack a family physician. Uh, so this has been studied once before. Uh, it was an American single stud, or single center trial, and they looked at return visits within 72 hours of an index visit with a diagnosis of concussion. And they found about a 5% return rate within those 72 hours with almost all very common symptoms that we tell people about with concussions. This has never been studied though in Canada and because of our very different medical systems, the results aren't really translatable. Uh, so what we did, or our objective was to identify what proportion of patients discharged from a Canadian emergency department uh, diagnosed with a concussion return uh, within 14 days of their index visit and then be to describe what this population looked like when we compare returners to non-returners. Uh, so what did we do? We did a retrospective health records review of one year worth of charts um, of patients visiting the health, Hamilton Health Sciences Emergency and Urgent Care Centers in 2016. The data was all collected using ICD codes and we specific specifically looked at concussions and post-concussional syndrome as the codes. Uh, and then all of the charts were reviewed by one of two people. Uh, who did we include? You had to be over 18 and your symptoms had to be consistent with the Zurich consensus on concussions. So they needed at least one subjective or one objective sign of a concussion as they're up here. And the injury had to have happened within the previous 14 days from their first visit to the emergency department. We excluded anyone who had an intracranial hemorrhage on CT, not surprisingly, and if you were admitted to hospital at the time of index visit for any reason, some of these people were elderly who fell and ended up being admitted for uh, breaks, but we, they were still excluded. Uh, so what do we find? We initially had 526 index visit charts, but ended up removing 137. Either they were a duplicate chart, we couldn't find the index visit, like they'd gone to a different hospital, uh, or their injuries were greater than two weeks before their presentation to the emergency room. So we had 389 uh, charts, and we found that 38 of them returned, so that's about a 9.8% return rate. When we broke down the data to see the characteristics of the patients, if we just look at the patients themselves, the only thing that was statistically uh, significant was their mechanisms. So we found that people who sustained a sports-related concussions were less likely to return, and those who sustained a concussion as a result of an assault of any type were more likely to return. And I will highlight the sex difference here. We this is not statistically significant, but we had almost equal men and women, and there are slightly more women who returned, but that's not significant. Uh, and then if we look at the uh, actual care that they received in the emergency department, the only thing that predicted whether they would return or not was whether they were referred to our concussion clinic. And if they were, they were less likely to re return. In Hamilton, the concussion clinic was basically once a referral was received, a nurse would call them within seven to 14 days, find out what their symptoms were like, and if there were concerning symptoms, they would ref uh, book an appointment with a neurologist for follow-up to discuss those symptoms. Uh, so then if we look at who returned and why they returned, interestingly, all of the, the symptoms for which people returned were all your classic symptoms that we quote people that they'll have, or at least I do, within the seven to 14 days of the injury, so headache being the most common. Uh, as well, we see that 16 more people had their brains scanned and we found no more abnormal findings. So we weren't really missing anything in this population. Uh, these seem to be people returning with classic concussion symptoms. 
Uh, so what were our key points? So we had a 10% return rate to the ED within 14 days, and the average length of that was about 3.7 days after their first visit. All of the reasons that people returned were common concussion symptoms, uh, all within a normal expected time for these symptoms. Um, which highlights either a lack of understanding on the patient's part or more likely a lack of education on the part of the physician to the patient about what they should expect in that period of time following. Uh, and again, almost half of these returns underwent a CT scan that likely would, is not really considered indicated given the symptoms that they presented with. Uh, we looked a lot at discharge instructions to see if there was any correlation. Now on the charts, 83% of physicians documented some discharge instructions, but what those were varied vastly. We also looked at whether if you uh, got a head injury routine sheet that told you what the red flags were and what a normal concussion uh, process was and what to do, whether that would decrease their return, but it didn't. We do know from research that multimodal discharge instructions do help with patient compliance, but that didn't really seem to play out in this study. Uh, so if we do kind of focus in on those, the big things we did see, the uh, having a sports injury did decrease your chance of return, and that's either because patients are downplaying their symptoms so they can return to play sooner, or hopefully on the other side they have better access to follow up through team physicians or physiotherapists who they can discuss their symptoms with and they don't need to return to an emergency room. We also see that specialized follow-up does decrease the return, likely because it's giving you uh, someone to talk to if you don't have a family physician or someone you feel is confidently trained in this area to discuss these complex symptoms. And you are more likely to return if you are an assault victim. That's probably multifactorial, could be related to having a lack of access to healthcare or wanting anonymous healthcare in an emergency room if it's in like a domestic, domestic abuse, or if it's related to wanting, uh, there's a litigation aspect of it, although we're not sure. Um, there's of course quite a few limitations to the study. The biggest one that's been highlighted today is concussion does not have a clear, or clear definition, and so this is based on the physicians making the diagnosis of concussion. Uh, and we used the Zurich criteria, which is obviously specific for sport, and we applied it to everyone. Um, ICD codes themselves are more of a statistical thing and don't always translate well into clinical research. Uh, and we were reading written patient charts. So there was lots of variability in what people charted. There was lots, and what was said in the chart is not necessarily what was said to the patient. Uh, and finally, it was technically a multi-center trial, but the centers were all staffed by the same group of phys physicians, so there's a lot of bias in that group. Um, so yeah, we were looking from a clinical point of view. We really highlight that clear discharge instructions are likely needed to really tell patients what they should expect following a concussion uh, so that they're not surprised or alarmed when these symptoms are, slight, are persistent for at least a few days. Uh, and the use of concussion clinics when you have access to them is likely beneficial to help patients and help patients feel confident with their uh, with the care they received and that their symptoms are normal. And finally, to, we should be cautious about using CT scans in returning visits, as oftentimes these are just radiation. And that's it. Thank you. My sense and my understanding is, is you don't need any objective finding. No. And so when you label someone as needing objective, like loss of consciousness or amnesia, you're already categorizing a group that is probably higher in severity. So they either had to have subjective or objective. Some people yeah. did not have loss of consciousness or amnesia. They just had headaches following a head injury. Yeah, the, the other is, uh, while you are probably right about CT use, you know, I would caution um, your conclusion based on, you know, the rules that we have are mainly the Canadian CT head rules. Yes. And those are time limited. I, and I'm not positive, but I think with the 24 to 48 hours. 
And so after that, there is some judgment. And uh, to say that they weren't needed is applying um, an extrapolation that I don't think you can no. make uh, from the data that you have. No, that's true. Hi, thank you for the presentation. The 10% figure of returners to an emergency department caught my eye because there's also 10% of patients that after six to nine months will remain symptomatic, mm -hmm. so the so-called miserable minority. I wonder what happened to those 10% that return early to emergency department, where they followed, are you following longitudinally? Did no. they go on to develop yeah. persistent symptoms? Yeah, that's very interesting and would be very interesting to be able to follow because this was retrospective. We didn't have access to the patients themselves. It was just looking at the charts two years later. But it would definitely be interesting to contact them and see if those happen to also be the patients that are continuing to have symptoms. Thank you. Hi. Thank you for the presentation. I'm not very familiar with the Canadian healthcare system. I practice in America. but. Uh, it paid my attention that the return to the emergency department after follow-up with a concussion clinic, you called it, was nearly zero or zero. First thing that crossed my mind is how long average was the average time for a patient to get a follow-up appointment with a primary care physician versus with a concussion clinic? Is it because if it's like you can see them after one day in a concussion clinic and the primary care physician average wait time is seven to nine days, then could be just early follow-up would be the intervention here, not the concussion clinic versus primary care physician. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so do you so have a time or? The concussion clinic itself definitely was not next day follow-up. As I said, I think they, con they had to be contacted within, I think, 14 days of their visit, and then they would get a call. They wouldn't necessarily get an appointment. They just get a call from a trained like nursing expert in the area to kind of go through their symptoms. And then if she or he was concerned, he or she would book an appointment with a neurologist. Uh, and I think in terms of the family physician, if there are other family physicians here, but the rule, like how fast you can get in is really dependent on your family doctor. And I don't think there's really a quotable amount of time that you could say. Well, it would be very important to look at the time between the phone call and the AD visit and yeah. look at the average uh, time to wait for a PCP visit and see if there's different because that would be a variable need to be eliminated. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I also Thanks. Just quickly, do you know what the criteria are, why some people didn't get referred to the concussion clinic and some people did? No. It no. was all based on the, the expertise charge. of the physician who saw them, whether they felt that they were referred. There were a few people we flagged if they didn't have a family doctor, and oftentimes those were the people who were referred if they said they had no family doctor. Um, I, like, I can't remember, like, going through the charts that I read. I think sometimes if they'd had multiple concussions in the past, we looked at they'd had multiple concussions in the past, and that might have also flagged physicians to be like, oh, this is your eighth concussion, and you're here, we'll refer you. But I don't think that was, like, there was no specific rules. It was just on the basis of, yeah. 